Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante, and welcome back to Overpain. Today's patient is Gavin Partridge. Greetings, Mr. Dante. Gavin. Like so many other unfortunates, I'm not as good at art as I would like to be. Humble. I like it. I'm trying to teach myself illustration, however, it turns out that's quite hard. And so I turn to you, my last bastion of hope. Well, not quite, I like Jazza too, but you are certainly my favorite. Thank you. I created the above piece in grayscale first of all, then I tried to color it with layer effects, color, multiply, etc. As a result, it looks horribly washed out. It's about two little chaps who are trying to retrieve something that the dodgy bloke in the house stole from them, but he's proper scary. I would be very interested to hear your thoughts if you have the time to spare. Keep up the good work, sir, your channel is truly inspiring. Kindest regards, Gavin. Well then, let's take a closer look, shall we? Aha, so one main problem that I see right away is with this um, problem of colors being washed out after being colorized from black and white version. I gotta say, it's not washed out at all. The contrast is pretty strong, like uh, in the nearby objects, we get pretty close to blacks, and we have brights as well, and in the distance there's aerial perspective, so everything makes total sense, like the contrast is not washed out, the colors are not desaturated, like the fire is all right. The actual problem, I think, is that there's no actual colors of objects at all in the scene. We only have the color of the lighting. Like I have quite some practice in 3D and this looks to me like a 3D scene that's properly lit and everything, but all the models don't have any textures applied to them. They're all white or gray and only colorful lights change some surface colors, but that's it. All the surfaces are of the same color. So we'll be fixing that, but first let's change some things about the composition that would make sense to do first before we colorize stuff. Like, pretty much everything is all okay, like nothing is completely bad. Except for maybe this part, like, uh, this is no good, like, too much crop. I feel like this black frame, this one, it wasn't here before and then it, like, cut into the image, removing some details, like, cutting the feet of the characters like that. We talked about it a lot in Overpain series, we definitely need to fix that. They, the guys should be closer to the center of the image to avoid that. And overall, I get that they're, like, small and not very noticeable in this scene, they're, like, hiding, but they're not hiding from us. It would make sense to make them, you know, closer to the third, maybe they would be in here. And another thing that I want to do is lowering the horizon line and making the house a lot more creepy by like being like this, like uh, standing tall in front of us, like attacking us with its scariness. So I'm gonna try and quickly make the house taller and like this, and maybe the horizon would be, instead of being here, it would be here. And this would make the house look a lot more dangerous. We would be looking at it like from the bottom to the top. That's the creepy thing that would bring a lot more message to the way things appear on the screen, which is important. Right now everything is very static, like the horizon line is exactly in the middle. All the, like, columns, I, I can see some kind of attempt to m make them like this, but I think they're just, like, crooked this way, it's not actually the perspective message. So, if we would make the perspective actually like that, that would be kind of cooler. And one last thing that I'm thinking about is the sign. It's as short as these little hobbit dwarfy creatures over here which doesn't seem to be appropriate, like this sign should have been put by that proper scary bloke over there, and he appears to be like a taller guy, which I assume kind of brings the whole idea that this is like a fantasy world with different kinds of creatures. These are the short, small guys, and that one is a taller one. So it would make sense if the sign would be bigger and... Uh, like taller specifically, so it would feel like these two have nothing that fits them 
in this territory, they are not welcome here. That would be a good message in that. So I want to do that as well. And yeah, aside from that, we'll see how everything will change after we do the big adaptation of all the shapes. Okay, so here we are with the first set of fixes. As you can see, I pretty much got rid of a whole lot of empty space in the very center of the image, which was kind of a waste, don't you think? I still need to bring back the bridge and the stick with the skull, it will look pretty cool when I'll bring it back with overlapping, it's gonna look cool. But we run into one big problem. Right now the main evil guy is over here. He's like squished in an odd way. So I'm gonna just reposition him into this window and that'll solve it, I think. I could also just mirror the whole house. Maybe that will even work better because I kind of want the porch to face to the right as well, so... Kind of feels super odd, I don't know. It's just about what will be more work to do, really. It doesn't really matter how exactly it's positioned. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just copy this and paste it in here. And that'll be cool, like the guys are in here and they're facing the evil dude over there. Proper direction. We enter the composition from the left and then go over there through the bridge that we'll bring back soon. It's gonna look pretty cool. Yeah, I also moved the sign to the left. It kind of didn't feel like it would fit well. It would cover the, the house too much on the right. So I moved it to the left so it's like actually in the face of our characters. Kind of makes sense. And overall I made it much darker so it feels like it's in the shadowy area where the whole gate is and our characters. I also want to add some of the like light from the torch one of the dudes is carrying. So let's see, let's use a clipping mask. Maybe color dodge will do, let's see. Like I'm just gonna use the fire color and make it brighter in a certain way. Oh yeah, this looks like it's lit. Lit. Just need to choose just the right hue for this. This seems like the hue that the rest of the dudes have. Just need to make sure I respect the geometry as well. Some of the cracks will also avoid the light from the torch. And yeah, looks pretty legit, I think. Now I'll bring back the bridge and move the window with the guy to the right. So I'm gonna introduce some parallax changes to this bridge. Parallax is a smart word for when something three-dimensional is moving around. Something in the distance moves less quickly as something in the front does. So you have like two parts of the object moving differently from each other. So you have like a three-dimensional like deep movement because of that. So in this case, I'm gonna be segregating the foreground, like this part of the bridge. Actually, I'm gonna also grab some of this grass because it's right there as well and we need it. So now I have this and then we have the rest of it, the background part. 
like this and we're gonna move them between one another like uh, the background will probably sink deeper and the foreground will stick higher so we would get the feeling of not looking at the bridge like this but a bit more like this so it's more on our eye level so here we have the both parts of the bridge in front of the house like on top of the house layer but below our foreground layer and i'm gonna move it about make the skull or skulls a bit brighter because they don't look white and that's already where transitioning to actually colorizing actual objects by the way is that a swastika over there he is a proper scary bloke now let's create a separate layer in multiply mode and colorize everything in the scene because right now as i said everything is just pretty much gray new layer multiply and the moment we start like i'm gonna be thinking the ground it's like metal brown color or something so i'm gonna go with this because it may be kind of a sandy soil or not it depends on what we want to see i'm gonna start with like really covering everything and then add all the colorful details on top of it separately not separately in this layer just on top of it actually using the clipping mask for the foreground layer i think it will be better the distant layer where the house is and the rest of the background it needs to be more washed out anyway like the ground in the distance will be not as saturated and dark as it is in the foreground so no need to have it all in one layer now stones could actually remain just gray as they are but to not make them like white marble or something i'll darken them just a little bit so they would actually be gray not white now i'll continue doing this but you already may see the problem with all of this like even if i remove the fire from the equation like the ground and the stone they're colorized and all but they do appear really dark it's just the fact because we're multiplying with certain color on top of already pretty dim picture like it was meant to be finalized this way and it kind of looks like everything's white but the whole scene is just really dark and then on top of that we make everything not white but darker into certain colors so the whole scene gets even darker too dark so what we do is we add an adjustment layer this is something photoshop also has and our studio pro also happens to have it which is really cool this is like real-time color correction layers whatever if you don't know what this is so i'm gonna be using like uh, curves i guess because it's clear what exactly we're doing like i'm increasing the brightness by bringing closer the whitest point is gonna be like well maybe this bright we'll adjust some stuff later but the important thing here is that this layer is on top of all the layers underneath and it will be making everything brighter in real time all of the time without any losses in the picture like in here you kind of can see the losses but if i'll paint with darker color on top you see we bring back all the details that were overexposed and that's exactly what we need of course you don't have to paint like that you can just paint everything much lighter making sure that you just show some shadows for the details but overall picture should be pretty bright and then in multiply you would colorize everything you can also like use say not the multiply mode but you know the color mode or hue not hue but i guess color mode it would make things keep the same brightness and just change the hue of it but in that case we completely remove the effect of this cold ambience so the whole blue atmosphere this cold light of the scene it would be completely gone and we don't want that that's issue number one and number two all objects would be of the same brightness even though they're of different hue like if i would have this ground in here but then i would want to have like a darker ground 
I wouldn't be able to paint it darker, it would only become desaturated. And when using multiply, if I paint with a darker color, the object will be of actually darker color. So you have all the range of possibilities, including like painting with black paint, it will make the object black. So that's why I prefer this method over using other types of layers, layer modes. Now the house will have like a red roof. And you see the color is really saturated, very flaming kind of red. But in the actual scene you see it's kind of dim and darker, which totally makes sense. In such a cold environment of this creepy lighting in this scene, red would actually look like this exactly. So. We just choose the actual colors of the surfaces and multiply mode and all the settings that we made will take care of actually applying this color into the gamma of the scene for us. Really cool. Of course, I usually work in one layer, so I make this kind of calculations on how to make the, for instance, red color kind of dimmer, darker and less saturated and cold gamma. I just do that in my head and just paint with this kind of color right away. But I guess this is a cool way to learn how the colors would adapt to one another in different gammas and everything. To first like try blending those in different layers and see how the colors change. I'll probably create like a group that will make things a lot easier. That group will be of multiply mode. Inside of it there will be all kinds of separate layers in normal mode. So I'm gonna like now create another layer and I'm gonna be painting like the overall color of the whole house, like of its wooden part. Uh, that would be, I guess, this kind of color of wood. And now I'm gonna be painting it. This is a layer in normal mode underneath the roof color layer that is also in normal mode. So they blend one over another without making each other darker, just perfectly covering the layer of the roof. The red layer is covering the strokes of the wooden color that I'm making right now, so no interference there. First it looks like this, but then the whole group starts working as one flat layer in multiply mode. And there we go. Really cool setup to quickly and easily manipulate the colors of the objects without the need to like avoid like work with edges or only paint everything in one layer all the colors. This way you don't have to like be too strategic about it and just paint things the way you want. And yeah, overall, as I said, the background layer should be a bit more washed out because of the aerial perspective and all. So I'm gonna just do that by, in the end, when I'm done with colorizing everything, I'll just make it transparent a bit. That's pretty much what it would be. Yeah, it's a good idea to use the color picker tool in Photoshop or in Krita or in any other app. Usually if you would go to the like eyedropper tool, there should be a mode like of picking up colors from only the current layer, not all layers. This way it will make your life much easier so you would be able to actually grab the colors of your layer and get back to painting instead of picking up the darkened color after it's multiplied. So for working in multiple layers, this is a good idea to do that. It's pretty cool to see how the whole picture kind of becomes more alive when we're colorizing certain details like these stones are white, the wood is brown, the roof is red, looking pretty cool already. See, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and walk all over the picture and colorize the rest of it and see what happens.
adding some deeper shadows like ambient occlusion, turning on RTX for the house. Like some areas definitely deserve a bit deeper shadows, even though it's kind of in the distance and everything, I'm not getting even close to actual black, but a little bit more contrast is still required I think here. So I'm just in the black and white layer right now, or in the blue layer, right? In this, this is where I'm painting, and everything else on top is just colorizing stuff automatically. Spending most of the time fixing the transparency of the foreground layer that I didn't care enough about before when I was cutting everything out. Now it's a real problem when I'm trying to colorize stuff. It would be so much better if all the silhouettes of the objects would actually be clean and precise. Alright, that's pretty good, so I more or less colorized pretty much everything. Like the silhouettes of the trees in the background, they don't require that, they're way too deep into the aerial perspective, so they've lost their colors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll probably duplicate everything and merge it down. Seems like it worked out. So yeah, with any kind of multi-layer work, if you're like trying to create an actual painting, there is always a moment where you need to merge everything together and just polish the final look. Because jumping back and forth between the layers all of the time until the very end, it's not gonna work out well. Like just for instance, in here you can see the silhouette of the roof and the silhouette of the color of the roof. There are two different things, which is, it makes no sense, everything needs to like where the object ends, that's where the color should end. But this is really hard, or actually if you would be very nitpicking, it's impossible to do. It will always like on the pixel level, on a sub-pixel level, the edge of the coloring layer will always be not exactly perfect. Even if you would like perfectly put it in the same place, the sub-pixel edge of it will be like colorizing the background behind the object anyway. So usually it's a good idea to just overall colorize the whole scene quickly in layers, but then merge it down and continue working on details in one layer, already having all the necessary color on the canvas, so you don't have to come up with the, like what kind of color would it be in this ambience and whatever, but making sure that the details are painted once. The color of it, the shape of it, the brightness of it, like all of it should be just made with one stroke of a proper color, of proper brightness. And of course, since I'm painting over this and the picture was naturally submitted in one layer and it was uh, naturally finalized already completely, so this is kind of a hard situation for me to deal with. Now I have to like butcher those details because I need to introduce new ones that would synchronize color and brightness. And those are the reasons why I don't really like working in separate layers. Not to mention like this fiasco with uh, perfectly cutting out the foreground and then having a problem with that and just constantly confusing which layer you're in at the moment when you're trying to paint this or that. You shouldn't be thinking about those things. You should be thinking about what you want to see on the canvas, like how to paint. It's a hard enough task on its own. And the whole mess with layers only makes it more complicated where it shouldn't be. So yeah, that's my opinion on that. But of course, if you just build up, if you just start the painting, I guess it kind of makes sense to... Especially if you like follow the sketch, if you already specified everything, the composition, the characters, the objects in the whole scene, and you just follow it perfectly. 
into the finalized look, then you can work in separate layers, but only before you start introducing actual precise details. That thing is not gonna work out well if you will still be working in separate layers. There we go. On top of it, when we finalize everything, we can add like a glow layer in screen mode. Something like that. So there you go. Thank you, Gavin, for your submission. This was a very interesting, complex picture with a really cool subject to talk about on how to colorize things and what it actually means to colorize. You have to think not only on the color of the lighting, but also on the color of the objects themselves. Make sure you combine that together. In this case, the cold light of the ambience and how it will be distorting all the colors of the objects in the scene. So using multiply plus curves or brightness or something like that uh, to compensate the loss in brightness, that's like the most physically correct way to achieve that effect. But there is a countless of different ways to colorize a black and white pictures as well. So you can look that up, I guess. This is my way. Uh, this thing, if you don't have the adjustment layers in your program of choice, you can just do that afterwards, like after you merge all the layers together to work on further details at that moment. So you merged everything in one layer and then just make the brightness of that layer higher and continue working. And yeah, this is what we had in the beginning. I think we did a good job of bringing the actual subject of the picture closer to the center, like the picture is actually about it. The guys, we can see them very well, they light up the keep out sign with their torch, and then very clearly on the top right spots we can see our antagonist. And the whole house looks very menacing with its uh, strong perspective and bigger size also. And yeah, obviously introducing actual colors to the scene for all the objects did its job to actually make everything look a lot more present and interesting and just colorized. I remember myself when I was learning in the beginning how to paint stuff and like a dense atmosphere. I also have this kind of confusion when you're like making sure that everything is lit by a very cold lighting for instance. You kind of end up having everything painted in just blue. But you gotta understand, this blue is not like a nightclub or some kind of concert blue where it's just like deep, super saturated blue. Like if things would be lit by something like this, then yeah, everything would be just of blue color. But when it gets less saturated, we start seeing the actual colors of surfaces of all the objects. A little bit, depending on how strong the ambience is, but if it's not completely 100% blue and more like grayish, then we'll definitely see all of the colors that will be slightly distorted, but not that crazily, to actually make everything just blue. So yeah, those are my thoughts and everything. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron, submit the picture with the message like Gavin did right here, and I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Man, the whole overpaint thing really gives me like a perspective on how many things you can do, like not wrong or right, but actually how many elements in the equation there when you're creating a painting, like what kind of characters, what kind of house, what kind of story, that part I didn't even touch in here, but I changed pretty much everything. So many things you can decide on, it's crazy, and there's always the best way to do it, for each of those elements, you just gotta find it. Some complex stuff.